All right. Um, so thank you everyone for being here. And then um, once again, my apology for being late. Um, I just want to also start by, uh, we have several agenda for discussion. Um, I think that uh, Rafa also probably shared uh, some of them, but I also want to maybe just talk about like maybe some of the rules uh, that will be also uh, relevant. I think that one of the frequent questions that also came up was that how do we actually keep track of people who are attending the call? Uh, as well as like, because especially for, um, you know, delegates, it is pretty crucial, you know, it is pretty critical as it comes toward their attendance, which also comes toward their, you know, payment, right? Uh, so some of the ideas that I had was potentially like uh, people can type in like the attendance. I know that for um, res, um, you know, CBC, that's what they kind of did. And I thought that maybe they can help. But then I also know that maybe typing in here on the chat, sign-in sheet is simplest. Um, code night, you mean like uh, have a list of like uh, AD and then they can do it on the like uh, Excel document? Is that what you're thinking? Hmm, okay. Um, Raphael, uh, what's your thought on it? Um, so yeah, I, I definitely don't want to uh, Type the names from the from the Zoom. So I would. Um, the only question is like, uh, if how how much how much trust assumptions do we have? Do we want to avoid there, right? But like basically for now, I'm very happy with like a, a Google Sheet. Okay. Well, it seems like actually uh, ecosystem scope is tracking it. So I think the only case, for example, if uh, delegates disagree with um, ecosystem scopes, then maybe that's also just case for potential discussion but if that's the case then maybe we don't have to worry about it just screenshot the yeah, participants it's screen. exactly what i was just thinking the same as paper i'm gonna do a screenshot now and i'm just gonna put it into a google drive and um then i think we, we are always good yeah I, I think that one concern that people had was like what happens if for example people come in a little bit late or people like have to leave early like um like do we mind such thing I know that we're. I know that this is a little bit like uh, you know meta, but then I also realized a lot of people have asked, so I just want to spend some time discussing it a bit. But um, I mean, so you know, based on discussion, it seems like the patent says that there's a spreadsheet and they track of it. Yeah, um, maybe we can just have a month of maybe see how they track it, and then if there's a lot of disagreement, we can think of ways to improve it. Like maybe that's the kind of way to go. Because I also don't want to necessarily increase the work for both delegates and us if they're already doing it as part of their uh, responsibility. Um, okay, screenshot of this. That works too. Um, also, um, sorry for the you know rush, but I want to also you know congrats um, Rafael and also you know please set you know crypto um, you know governance for joining the uh, growth CBC member. Um, I'm very honored. And then I believe that uh, together we can you know, build together. And then I also realized that from the CBC side, there's a lot of more discussion. And I think that's good because sometimes that uh, some of the, my ideas might be slightly different, but I think it also helps to be refined by another person and another team. So I'm very grateful about that. Um, so Rafael, it seems like that you share some of the agenda, like is it okay if you also um, share it again? Um, in case, because I just joined, so I didn't see that. Yeah. Definitely. Um, so the agenda for this meeting will focus on the stability and liquidity scope. And we have a pretty short agenda that uh, still offers, I think, a lot to talk about. And the first point on the agenda is like, what are the most um, important areas in the stability and liquidity scope that can be improved or clarified? Um, then we would like, as a second point on the agenda, to pin down some characteristics for the experts that um, should be invited in the, into the advisory council and um, for the ALM model. So I think we'll see if we can even get through all of these three. Um, but as far as far as I, I'm concerned, these are, this is a, a pretty suitable agenda for today. 
All right, sounds good. Uh, so going back to the scope and improvement, I do think that, I mean, it is also part of our responsibility. Um, but just curious, also this is discussion point for um, other CBC member as well as um, for um, ADs if they also want to pitch in uh, to see what's more realistic, which is like how they want to contribute to it, right? Because I think that we saw like different CBCs uh, trying different ways. Uh, for us, we talk about potentially like people posting on forum. Like let's say, for example, we have this call to talk about what can be improved. Um, do we have somebody that keeps notes about it or, and then, um, you know, there are also some that, for example, post on forum, like um, how should we think about like, uh, you know, gathering those. Um, of course, it doesn't have to be like um, everything like a very uh, neat per se. And also it's like initial phase. But I just think that like, especially from the 80s who um, do have to like, or encouraged to like because they're not forced to right or like uh, they have to per se but it's like encouraged to like what would be the good way for them to you know contribute in a way they can improve but also it's not too um, overwhelming for you know you know both cbc as well as for ad um, and uh, so, for ad's as well like um, you know feel free to chip in as well like we also respect your opinion I, I can keep notes for today. I think uh, in the long run, if it's if it's important enough, then we can like hire one of these transcri transcription bots or something. Um, but I agree that there's it would be good to have like some something like a document where people can contribute to. Or maybe uh, ads in this call can say what they're comfortable with because I've seen some hesitancy over uh, Google Docs. Yeah, that's a good point. All right, then let's talk about some of those. All right, we we'll also say it makes sense to make different tiers of expected contribution, whether somebody is the unpaid AD on RD or PD. Um, so Roomba is an interesting point, but I think at least for now, like we don't know whether they are going to be RD or PD, right? Because I don't think they got the delegation yet. Um, and also like um, what happens if, for example, like um, somebody that's not a, like I said, top seven per like, you know, top per se, but they want to be top and they want to contribute more. So um, I think it's also kind of question about like what happens. But I mean, of course, like from CBC is my guess. I mean, I also have to see like what other CBCs do and I'll be also happy to hear like how, for example, um, yesterday's call went. So we can be also updated on it. But just in general, it's like CBCs want to encourage, of course, like ADs to do work, but we don't have a ways to like, uh, like make it as uh, mandatory, right? And that's fine. Uh, but I think it's also like a healthy relationship, right? Because if, for example, ADs don't do anything, knowing that uh, it's very unlikely for CBCs to ban unless like they get very serious about it, I don't think it's a like healthy uh, relationship. So I think we, I think the initial like the phase, I think we'll also figure out what would be the healthy like a balance. But yeah, let's I think uh, we can go into the scope and uh, especially from the AD side, like were there any like parts that uh, felt that needs to be clarified or uh, improved? And also like, even if you're not AD, um, I know that anybody contributing can also discuss and try to improve it. So uh, feel free to share. Um, if you if you are slightly worried that you might think that um, it has your own bias, uh, I think that you can try to make neutral as possible, and then we we'll also try to pick up from there to uh, maybe improve upon it. With regards to the growth CVC scope framework position document, can constitutional delegates provide help? Um, so your question was that for regarding the document, whether constitutional delegates can help to like improve it? Um, I believe so, and I think that some of the uh, CDs slash ADs already has done it. Uh, I also seen from like uh, Refi CBC, um, 
you know, there are some comments on it, um, as well as that um, I know that, uh, you know, there are also some other um, SACDs that also point out uh, some of different ways. Um, or so even before that, JS asked, have you begun crafting the strategy document? So we have the initial strategy that I wrote for introduction, but um, I think that for exact strategy, um, I think I have to see like what's the format. I did look at, for example, what Refi CBC did. And then if that's the format that's acceptable, I think we'll uh, at least see the format and then try to match it that's like uh, compliant. Uh, but I think that for this one, maybe we can ask uh, you know, ecosystem or you know, Gov Alpha for some guidance. Um, for the strategy document, is there like specific format that we need to follow? Uh, just curious. Uh, so it will be largely up to you, but I mean, it is tailored to the scopes. So essentially, at the end of the day, it'll need to manifest in a scope edit, but like how it crafts and develops over time is, is kind of up to your managing. Okay, so I see that Rune say that it's going to come into June to give some specifics, but ABC okay. Um, I think regarding it, um, both with, you know, please side Gov will work on some of the description as well as the, um, we've been also reached out to have like a brief description, I think for the site as well. So we'll work on those as well. But um, I think we definitely want to also give more information for ADs to, to work on it, of course. Uh, but I think that until we also see in June, I think some of it might be a uh, change. So that's just kind of expected. All right, so now that um, we can go back to the scope and the risk reform with working together to keep the Okay. Uh, so once by name, a line that doesn't put the ABCs or ADs at risk. Okay. okay. I think that for this one, we also need to kind of think about it. Like, what's the best way to approach it? Um, of course, like it's the initial phase, so I think it's also about testing, and if it doesn't fit, then we change. Uh, all right. Um, so I do want to go back to talking about the scope uh, because. Right now, I think a lot of questions has been regarding kind of matters regarding it, as well as like some of the uh, safeguards, which I also understand are important. But um, if anybody can also like share some parts about where it can be improved, uh, I think that would be good. Uh, if you already mentioned on the forum or other places that we haven't seen, uh, feel free to point out so that we can also go back and then um, you know gather those as well. Um, either way, we appreciate all the feedback uh, to improve it. So for, for me personally, something that isn't totally clear is the is the way we deal with um with precious stable coins, basically. So um I think in the current in the current system we have GUSD 500 million, and we have a lot of USDC, and I think we, we have some USDP, right? And so the question is like going forward, do we want to, to keep these kind of um, uh, uh, diversification in stable coins, or is it is it do, do we want to like put uh, everything on in one in one um, area, like for instance with with a potential Coinbase and uh, start to D. I think that. Um, I think all the points we can uh, write down or we can record and then uh, we can cut around. I think that some of the, so from what I kind of understand is also the question about some of it, it will be maybe like strategy, but I also understand that the focus also has been 
clarifying some of the language that's like not clear on the document, um, which also I think I saw that some of the CBCs, uh, they had some you know, delegates that were able to do that. So um, I think it's like uh, maybe a mixture of it. It's also possible that some of the suggestions maybe don't get accepted, maybe because they think that it's not in the scope of ABC, which is fine. Uh, but I think that, yeah, I, we should have definitely a mixture of those to see like uh, what's allowed. Um, but okay, uh, I think that I can also ask a Frank, you know, like a, you know, like a honest, you know, question for delegates. And this is not going to like impact my opinion about it, but have actually delegates read the scope that we're supposed to discuss? And then at least have some thoughts about it. Or if you did read it, is the reason why you don't have like opinions or ways to improve is because you're worried about, for example, getting in the crosshair? Because I, I think those are also important for us to consider. Okay, so I see. Okay, I see. Okay, so it seems like it's a kind of maybe mixture. Seems like that some delegates, they do have some ideas how to improve it, but they're just like very cautious about it because they worry that you might get the crosshair. Okay, and then some seems like they read it, but uh, you know didn't read deep enough to have like uh, opinions or ways to improve. So I think that this is well for the crosshair part about like uh, being safe. That's something that I think that we just need to coordinate, right? Because we also don't want to be in a situation where delegates just don't want to contribute because they're worried about potentially getting banned right away. Um, and also like, I don't know how the delegation itself is gonna work per se, like, because I think that depends on maker holders like delegating it, but Ideally, of course, like we will want in a situation where delegates who are active also gets rewarded, right? In theory. Okay. So I think, okay, so for this part, maybe um, I will also like uh, give Rune or, you know, you know, go up on some of the discussion point, which is like, if delegates are too concerned about giving such less improvement points because they think that they might get banned or you know cross that line, like do you think that maybe there's a kind of good balance toward it? Because I don't think it's also very sustainable to be like, okay, well, none of them can speak, right? So like maybe some thoughts to it. I guess the, the question do would be what, what are you hoping to get from the delegates themselves? Because my understanding is that the delegates are the pass through for the CBC strategy. Um, so theoretically that should be coming from the CBC members, not the delegates. So so what, what are you what are you hoping for the delegates to contribute to the discussion? Well, I mean in terms of the improvements, I was thinking that um well, so maybe it's a different understanding, uh, but at least the understanding was that like CBCs themselves are more for providing, let's say, bias, right? And then especially for questions about how to clarify, I thought that it was kind of AD's job to point those out. Um, and also you can imagine that, I mean, yes, Rune, you're correct that they're not experts in LMA, for example, uh, but that doesn't mean that they cannot point out some of the parts that can be clarified, or if they think that some of them are paradox, they can also point those out, right? Um, yeah, so I, I think that that was kind of the, uh, you know, the point that I want to make was that, uh, yes, I understand that they're not experts. Yes, I understand that they probably cannot be like, hey, we should definitely have this and that, but I thought that also the point about improving such was that we are gonna, for example, try to clarify as much as possible 
and then remove a lot like if they're like paradox or let's say something that contradicts each other like we're going to try to edit it so that in the future it becomes very you know tight and there's no like uh, mistakes or misinterpretation was kind of my idea so but i think that for this like that kind of thing is more about not necessarily like them being experts per se nor is it something that they have to worry about being political um so maybe that's the at least my thinking behind it i guess you know like once again like if it's something that we as in like cbc's have to basically point out those as well like we we might we can but a it's probably not as like effective or efficient as like many people working on it like if we maybe comment like maybe we can change two or three we probably cannot like edit as many as for example others also helping us and two is then also the question is that well I mean, at least that was kind of i think the expectations so maybe it's it's possible that it's the different expectation but i think that it would be good to clarify such Yeah, I mean, you know, to clarify, like, I'm not saying that, um, you know, um, delegates are doing bad job or anything, um, because I think it's, of course, like interaction. I think Rune also point out that that's the optimal way uh, ABC and delegate interaction should work. And for now, like, I don't think that there's maybe a way to really encourage that, right? So it's possible that in the future, maybe make holders will reward more, you know, uh, delegates who are active and try to clarify as much as possible. It's possible. Uh, but it's also, you know, maybe the balance is not there yet. So maybe it's just early phase. All right. Yes, I agree. Um, I think that we can talk about the council as well as the advisor. Um, so last week, uh, we had a very interesting discussion. The idea also was about, okay, so uh, delegates themselves are not experts. CBCs are also not experts, especially regarding AML. Um, I was also fortunate to attend the key CBC and saw the staff also give a presentation and others. Um, so the question also becomes, okay, so we do need to especially have advisors. Uh, especially for the, I mean, for growth CBC, we do believe in you know growth in the long term, and those are very crucial. Now the question is two things. I think one is how to clarify, like uh, because we know, for example, there's a budget, but like what kind of, uh, let's say, advisors do we want? Like some of the specifics. Um, I understand that it shouldn't be, for example, pinpoint exactly who or what organization. At least, like a description of like what kind of organization would be best, right? Uh, so, well, I think that one of the common uh, descriptions, especially Rune kind of share, was uh, potentially somebody that's very well known in the traditional field uh, that has, for example, done in you know, professional audit or professional you know management, uh, that kind of thing. So maybe that can be also one of the description. Or, um, but yeah. So for these, like, anybody had any thoughts and? If you have a thoughts, but you think that you cannot share, uh, then do also let us know because I think it's also important to maybe try to clarify, you know, ways for, for example, like you know, delegates if they're so afraid of such. Like, I think it's also good to discuss about it. So. So I think it would be really good to have some internal experts on the advisory council just to get that, um, you know, to get to have that institutional knowledge. Um, but then I think we we definitely need outside eyes as well. Um, so for the for the outside eyes, I would like to um, to approach somebody from from a reputable company or something and i wanted to know if there's like any knowledge about like some political reason not to do that and and maybe to go with people that are more from the DeFi space 
Okay. Uh, actually, I also found that interesting uh, discussion. Uh, so, uh, Code 9 mentioned potentially McKenzie and then um, ADCB. They respectfully believe this is a terrible direction. Can elaborate on why? Um, is it okay for you to describe like why or is it not allowed? It? Uh, I'm happy to provide my personal input. I'm not speaking on behalf of anyone, just on myself. Um, having had the experience of trying to speak to a number of traditional companies to, you know, source various types of advisory capabilities in different respects, including ALM. Uh, what I was left with was the impression that Maker is literally on another planet for all of these people. It takes at least an hour to explain to most people, even sort of experienced financial consultants, what Maker is. And then you're battered with questions of like, but where does it pay tax? Where is it incorporated? Um, so I think companies like McKinsey are probably going to be all too happy to help. I don't expect them to, I, I don't know if there's a wrapper to the CVC or what. They'll probably be more than happy to sign a, a, an engagement. It'll look something like, you know, a small ticket with a teaser for a first phase, followed by like a $3 million 10-year engagement um, for ongoing advice. And I expect a lot of this advice to be quite mid. That said, I do think that there is value in having sort of domain specialists for specific questions. So I don't think there's any, I honestly would be surprised to hear of or meet or encounter any sort of crowdfi actor who could be capable of ingesting the ALM data for Maker, produce an asset allocation report, you know, uh, provide ongoing risk monitoring and translate it to governance in a, an understandable way. I think this is a tall order. Um, but I'm sure that there are plenty of experts, including inside the DAO. Do you think that maybe then adding a specification to a firm that also has successfully worked with the crypto entity before? Something that might be interesting? Because I think that maybe some of the concerns is that, well, so those big, na like big names, sure, they will pick, the, pick up the paycheck, but maybe their help is not yet proven. So if they, for example, successfully have helped other DeFi or other crypto projects, at least that's kind of way to filter it out. Well, Potentially, maybe. yeah. Although a lot of them will have like tombstones. Of, they'll, they'll say, like, they'll give you a pitch deck and like our team's experience is like 30 years deep in crypto. And they'll have like tombstones of Coinbase, an exchange, Bit, whatever the hell, X. Uh, you know, it'll be like a litany of sort of tradi basically traditional companies that they've done like IPOs for or what have you. Uh, yeah. And as Seb says, you need to be able to frame a specific, like a very clear question. I see. And in but terms of respect, I... sorry, no, go on. Go on. Yeah. Uh, no, no, no. Um, uh, you can share. Sorry about that. Uh, yeah, and then it was just a remark on the respect. Um, I think we're in a space that's so far removed from TradFi experience. It will take ages for them to get up to speed. And their brand names, as such as they are, won't be more worth that much to Maker. Like, there's value for a company to hire uh, whatever, McKinsey, if they want to sell more opioids or whatever. but or make her like the benefit of hiring McKinsey is a bit more limited in my view. But I think like with, with very specific questions, for instance, like how how to combine different maturities, I think that's something that the TradFi should have a ton yeah. of experience with, right? So I think I totally agree with your point that we shouldn't go there and say like, hey, please look at Maker, come up with an ALM framework. I think that's like, I, I'm, I'm totally on, on the same page as you are, but I think there are these, I think we just should use them as a tool and really find out where they're good at and then really cherry pick that in, instead yeah, of agreed. these kind of retainer uh, or like um, broad uh, questions, which, which I agree doesn't sound very promising to me. 
No, I agree. And I think it's, it probably sounds like you could probably classify the four different sort of asks in terms of like ALM understanding, which I don't think anyone has done other, other than said for maker, not the tooth, uh, the horn here, but uh, ALM is one thing that I think maker has a more advanced understanding of than other protocols and certainly than other firms. Mm -hmm. um, but there are benefits and questions that could potentially be answered, especially in terms of developing dynamic models. Uh, asset allocation factor models in a second step, uh, risk and legal due diligence on real world asset vaults, or rather more around, yeah, I don't really have a clear, but let's call it sort of real world asset third bucket. Don't really have a clear understanding here. It's not my, it's not my uh, cup of tea. And then the final one is like the governance part where I think the yeah, external firms will have difficulty engaging on Discord anyway. Okay, interesting. So I think that maybe some of the, so I think we are also getting uh, somewhere in terms of specification. So maybe it's also possible, well, because as advisor, at least what I understood was also it's a group, right? Like it's not just like one advisor doing everything, right? So maybe there's possible that we can try to identify the areas that the outsiders, especially those, can also like advise better, right? Because yeah, you you might. I mean, I I think that especially in terms of like DeFi, DeFi style, like a real world asset, it might be something that's a little bit difficult for traditional companies to understand. But in if you look at like break down each part, there must be also parts that we can outsource or um, can ask for advisors for help, right? So maybe that process is also needed. Uh, I'm not sure whether we can add that to the process for advisor specification, but maybe that's also a way to try to filter out so that, you know, the, because in the long term, the resource is finite, right? So it, in order to make sure the growth is sustainable, we also have to make sure that they do fit the criteria so that they can be used. Maybe that's uh, one way that we can also look at. By the way, we asked in like um, how growth CBC looks at potentially like make governance bias. Uh, you know, that's how we look at it. That's a good question in the chat. <clears throat> or actually, two. So one is if the facilitator is solely responsible for appointing the advisory council, um, then like how can the growth CBC have input? There, and I think that's probably something that needs to be amended in the in the in the scope. Like, do these, for instance, how how are these these uh, advisory council members appointed? And I would say that there needs to be some some input by um, like there needs to be a vote at some point, right? Because otherwise, MPR holders don't really control that and yeah okay good uh, delegates was on the own money pause okay that, that's good to know but that's 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 started in a way yeah uh, i think that in terms of, uh, you know there are a lot of discussions so i probably cannot respond to all of them but um so in terms of js question i think that um since there is also scope and also discussion about like advisory process right and this was also uh, what Rui mentioned was that maybe there can be some questions to and there's improvements to clarify, right? So what we can also try to support for the most fit candidate is potentially like changing the language to be like, okay, here are the, for example, criteria that advisors should have, and then there can be like an improvement, right, um, to the uh, potentially current model. And then in that way, we can also uh, try to support it in that way. So I think that's also how I imagine it because uh, for now, the advisory ones, um, especially the scope and those uh, related language can be improved, right? So that's how I look at it. Okay, and then I...
Yeah, I mean, this is always the balance. Like um, ABC is prevent from micromanaging the council, uh, as well as like not not being able to uh, well should not micromanage delegates either, right? So I think that's also the I think balance that we have to match is like or even the facilitators uh, we have to see is like is so is the delegate role basically attending calls and go there and vote like is that what delegates are supposed to do? No, that kind of thing. Um, but I think we'll figure out eventually. PFS, how will any of these experts be hired in practice? Well, I, okay, I mean, others can correct me if I'm wrong, but eventually let's say there's a set process and uh, I believe that those will also have to go through voting eventually. And then if they get voted in, they become it. Um, but I assume that it will be like a two-way process, right? Because just because there's a list of, let's say, potential people that we want to work with, uh, doesn't necessarily mean that they will say yes, of course. So maybe there will be some also applied that fit into such criteria. There will be also some that the governors decide to reach out to, well, I guess, facilitator or like um, um, those that do have the authority will reach out and they find those. And then maybe they will put up the vote is how I think about it. So I think maybe we can come away with um, some list of uh, criteria that the, that the experts should should fulfill. And I think we, we have some, some very good points here. And um, so I think like, can we get a little bit more specific on, on what ALM exactly means? Like what part of ALM do we, do we want to hire experts for? Because I think if we have, Set here, we have some people in the com in the community. So, like, if we if we go looking for external people, what exactly is it? Can we can we get a little bit more specific here on on what to look for? Yeah, to be honest, I'm not an expert on element, so I will leave that to those that. Do at least share some more with uh, maybe Seb or the team or others. Yeah, I mean, maybe I can just say, I mean, if you are here to govern make a DAO, which I think Rune said the ALM was super important, and it is because it's a big balance sheet with a material mismatch, or could have a material mismatch, that's uh, completely up to you. If you are not even aware of this part, I mean, you shouldn't try to manage it. I mean, <laughs> You, can, we, you will not have any help to have experts if you don't know what business you are managing in the first place. Just like you are trying to sell soda or widgets, but you don't know what those widgets are. You cannot ask Mackenzie to come and help you because you have just lost. So I think there is no other solution that to start on your side, understanding, and it could be very simple. I mean, nothing to me, something very complex. I mean. Should that be free floating or not? What are the consequences? Should be, uh, it be I think paper said a uh, central bank versus a commercial bank. I wasn't uh, clear, it wasn't clear what it was, but having some such kind of discussions, very simple. And then we can ask, okay, now we want to do this. What about getting experts advising us on what are the consequences if we do this, for instance? And this could be anything. But you cannot say, well, I want an ALM expert and tell us what to do, because they will have no clue. If no one knows what you are doing in the first place, no one can help you. What it is that you are doing here, that's the biggest question. What is the business model of Mikodal? If you don't have the answers to this question, you don't need an expert on anything. Okay, so I think the common theme that I'm hearing um, is basically like, even if we, let's say the governance decide to help those advisors, the governance should definitely know like what they're specifically for. And then even before that, understanding the structure and the nature um, of the system right now, right? Um, interesting. Um, 
يعني شو لو كان يا سوري كنتي يعني شو لو كان ذا اي ال ام فريم ورك اي ثينك اي بوس سم كويشن ات ذا اند ان اي نيفر جوت اني انسر ان جست لايك بيبل سي اي مين يو كير تو بي ديباكت فور 48 اورز يس نو وات ار ذا برو اند كونز اند ذات يو كان اسك ان اكسبيرت بات maybe they begin for 48 hours is not good you want to be super trusted and to be pegged uh what if you have a liquidity crisis is it a big problem or not do you want to have a big maturity mismatch or not do you want to have some external um stuff like you want to invest not in the us for instance that could be just a decision you don't need an expert to know that you don't want to invest in the us uh try to do some uh, better goods that just invest in the treasury bills because treasury bills are not saving the world investing in africa later or other places are useful for the world that's how a lot of options that you can have that no expert can help you but you have to decide or oh, someone else to decide and again it could be very very simple high level you don't need an expert to tell you if you are running for to make a profit or if you are a public good for instance if you want to be pegged or not pegged all right Peyton also says it also ties what is the growth abc thinks about the current and tiers is there a Better permissible setup that would encourage the vision of the council. Yeah, I think to be honest, those questions are pretty complex. And then I think, well, at least from what I what we believe would be, well, so especially delegates know like the direction and strategy we're thinking. So maybe they can also provide like the some of the ways, but maybe that's not. How the interaction should work, um, or maybe uh, Rafael, do you have any ideas about it? Yeah, I think it it kind of ties back to 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 also what um, what what Seth was saying that I think um, so as, as growth CVC we should basically see ALM as a tool that can also support some some growth because I think it, it can do different things right depending on like what kind of outcomes we need and so um where, where I'm a little hung up is that is like do we at the, do, do we try to come away with something very concrete because it seems like this is actually for the um for the experts in the in the advisory council then uh, to do or something more of a direction because um, like I think so at the moment the dynamic is pretty simple between in, in the growth CVC because it's just two people, right? So like you and I can basically discuss, hey, we want to uh we want to grow uh die demand out there. And um so we uh want to you know change the stability and liquidity scope in that direction. And we want to make sure that at the same time it's responsible. So ALM has to make sure that we don't at the same time suffer a terrible liquidity crisis while uh, while we grow, right? And so then I think what I don't really think or don't really understand is like what what is the job of delegates now in, in this call? Because if they can't contribute to that to our goal, because they're not the experts and they can't weigh in, then what what's the purpose of delegates in that call really? Then you know like what kind of they, they should serve as some information now for us to use in the document as far as I, I've understood it, but maybe, um, or we just use it to just set agenda so that everybody's informed. I think that that's fine too. But then I think, uh, do you and I just meet up before and, and discuss something and use this more like a, a platform for basically disseminating this information and, um, uh, just asking for for like a basic sanity check if if somebody can like surface hey no this will definitely not work because ABC like refi CBC is directly opposite like just making it up at the moment
Yeah, I mean, at the end of the day, it's also the question about how the delegates should contribute to it, how to hire and direct the advisory councils. Yeah, I mean, I think also goes back to Peyton's question and the overall question, which is like, it's also kind of fine line, right? Because if, for example, CBC members, including, you know, uh, Rafael and I are not experts on such, do we then really know, for example, details about like uh, different tiers and like some of the setups? Uh, to be honest, I mean, I mean, maybe, you know, Rafael knows much more than I do, but at least like I don't. Like, I know the strategy or the goal that we want, but I actually, at least for now, like I cannot say it. And that I think goes back to, well, since we're not the experts, then we, we need to have like expert view, right? Including, for example, grant facilitators and others, and also bring those uh, advisors, right? So uh, it is a little bit uh, question about, do you want CBC members to set up everything despite, for example, not being experts, or is it more like, okay, we have those, then we can get to those have to be fair and not important if they're entitled collaborate, you won't have time to keep up with all the scope and give delegates voting instructions. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe we can, okay, so Peyton wrote many different things, but can you maybe share like, um, what do you think is ideal? Because, so, yeah. I mean, you can be, I, so so you can be critical as well. Like uh, we definitely won't be offended, but so for example, like when you mean informative, like how would you um, set up the meeting or like ideally? All right, so there's a bit of construction in background. Sorry if that's uh, bad on the noise pollution, but uh you know, kind of the way to think of art is the, the delegates serve at, at the CVC's leisure, right? Like basically you get to say what rules you have for establishing your strategy, what you follow through and like what you're willing to like support or allow in, in terms of your delegates. So I think of CVC's kind of as like a, a you know, empowered strategic arm. Where it's like if if you want this type of information, you know, the best thing to do is to tell your delegates, hey, we're we're gonna need this stuff to talk about next week. So please get something together. Um, because like, you know, you don't have to do it that way, right? You you could just you and Raf talk about it behind <laughs> closed doors and then come to these meetings and just tell everyone how 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 to vote. That works too. But like if you're looking to get more informed opinion, like basically I, I would probably start by setting expectations for what you want to see out of someone serving your your vote strategy and uh yeah just like yeah kind of decide what direction you want because uh really that the direction's supposed to come from from you guys like as frank was saying in the chat the the delegates are are supposed to be like just subservient to their strategy right they're not supposed to think on their own they're supposed to just help you guys say hey this is one of my two strategies. I believe in this. Uh, so let me know what we're trying to accomplish and uh, I'll see how I can uh, help out with that. So that's kind of like the collaboration point, not so much strategy because that's supposed to be coming from your end. Um, but but maybe think of them as kind of a labor extension of the of the cerebral uh, committee. Or at least that's my, my current way of uh, viewing it. I just want to jump on the mic and just talk for two seconds. Like I think this exact discussion, I mean, basically all this relates to this like meta question of what are delegates supposed to do then? And it's like, it's such a crucial, super, super important uh, thing to talk about as much as possible in this whole phase before we launch the sub -dows. So I would really, I would really love it if like basically all the delegates here and just everyone they could like write down their thoughts and just like write as much as possible of like the different perspectives and you know like sort of the basically in all cases it comes down to this trade-off of like the risk of of um sort of delegates dominating over you know the principal agent problem basically and then the other end is this like bureaucratic red tape lockdown where nothing gets done um, and we have to kind of figure out what words we want to put in the, you know, the core alignment artifact um, to, to be the thing that ends up like guiding the, this, where, where's the gray area and where's the, 
black and white situations. Um, so just like the more thinking can be done about this in this early stage, the better. Like it's so much more important actually than even like ALM or something, right? Because the ALM thing we can update later. This kind of fundamental sort of balance of power and governance, we can't really change that later. So uh, yeah, I mean, thanks to everyone that's that's discussing it now. And and uh, you know, I'm, as I as I've written in the chat, I'm making like a first pass at, at, at adding some more detail to this already. But I could really use more data, like just as much as possible, really. Yeah, and you know, thank you so much for also sharing your opinion and. Um, I do also agree with Peyton that, um, especially with Raphael, uh, we can probably coordinate um, to also save time and maybe at least uh, provide. So at least for now, especially a lot of uh, delegates are very uncertain. It does seem like the more we provide, the more confidence slash also like more leeway. Like leeway is not bad way, but like leeway is in like they feel more comfortable. Of contributing, maybe so. Maybe we'll try. I do think I do think that it's a balance, and I think it's also about like if you assume that people act on their incentive and interest, uh, maybe it's also like um, interest and incentive that we haven't really uh, well, at least now we're experiencing and we're going through, right? So, I do agree that it's a good process and discussion. Um, okay. Um, Especially Rafael, like, are we missing any other topics for today, or is this um, at least everything? No, I think to... that's that's in, that's what we had. But I think um, it's probably a, a really good point at the moment because basically we could say, like, and uh, maybe we can just discuss this here now on, the, on this call too. So basically, for me, growth for Maker means growing the supply and the demand for dye, right? That both. Um, this is. For me, very important. Like, maybe, what's your, what's your opinion there? Yeah, actually, that's a good point. Um, and actually, this is something that uh, maybe we should also discuss more uh, within ourselves as well. But for me, was the growth was so, especially in my uh, initial um, draft and then also proposal for growth CBC. Idea was expansion and ex experiment, right? So growth was not just about, for example, uh, growing dye supply, although that is also part of it. It can be also growing in brand. It can also grow in like innovations, especially with uh, many different ideas, whether that's AI or expanding different like uh, innovations and um, having different partnerships. That was kind of how I think about it. And you're right, maybe that definition is too broad, but I do also want to make it a little bit broad because I thought that it also gives um, some of the you know, direction, and then some people might think differently. Right? Like, you know, for example, growth in the short term versus growth in the long term. And I don't necessarily want to say like this is the right answer, so you have to do this per se, um, because at least from my understanding was that at least a little bit of um, different interpretation is also allowed. Now, if that's not something that's allowed, like of course we'll try to agree and then make it very, very like tight. So there's no other way to understand it. But I think it's also the same for, for example, looking at other CBC, right? Because, um, and also I have a lot of respect for other CBC, but let's say for example, uh, refi CBC. And then, well, I think there are many different ways to, for example, look at, okay, how can we, for example, help the environment and then what it kind of means, right? So, um, it's possible that Ankara Dao can have different, like have an idea about it, but then it's also possible that from delegates or others, their understanding of like refi as well as like people who are delegating might be different, right? So I think that's why it is for growth. I didn't want to specify, for example, growth means supply of dye. Like I think that that would move in too narrow and then too limited. So yeah, at least that's just my thoughts, but happy totally to be no, able to hear I, I like the, I love the broad vision. I think that that's amazing and, and God probably gives everybody here um, a, a good context. But I think like for the for today's topic, like um, stability and liquidity, maybe we we could ask um, delegates to to provide some criteria for um, for experts in in that field that also um, 
or I think even concrete examples that also have um have a have a focus on growth, right? Because I think like you can you can what Ralph Bruner also said, you can get these total bureaucrats that are like amazing in ALM, but they, you know, like it's all very tied down and uh, basically not servicing growth. And we want people who who can who know how to take calculated risks, right? Like this is I think what what we what we want in in ALM. We want people who who know how to uh, how to find risks and maybe also put a number there if possible. But we want people who can who can be a little creative and and say like, yeah, this is a risk. This is how you address the risk, and this is the kind of reward uh, that you can get, and this is the upside and the downside. Like I think these are the kind of experts, at least I would like to see. And yeah, I would love to 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 get uh, delegates' input on that. It doesn't have to be today. I, I think we. Um, we are we we didn't prepare that call in that way because we were not clear about how to approach this best but uh have learned that now so i think this is a extremely valuable learning but maybe for the for the next call next week we can we can have like a list some names or some criteria that where, where we say okay how can alm or die with the questions that adrian also outlined um really support growth and, and growing uh, I think with with stability and liquidity, and maybe uh, contradict me if you if you would like to or add something if you if you like to do. I think he left. Oh, oh. yeah. I think his internet cut off. Oh shit! Oh, no, there he is. Sorry. Um, then maybe uh, for me, it's st stability and liquidity and growth means means grow and die. Or would you dis disagree? Yeah, I think that what we can do, uh, especially Raphael, is that, um, especially I think there's no restriction says that like for these, we have to talk only on CBC calls to coordinate on the idea as well as like uh, agenda for like next week. Unless I'm mistaken. Um, if I'm mistaken, please correct me. So I think that maybe what we can do is that we can also have a call to try to um, align our like uh, align our views as much as possible. Um, and then also in terms of the task, um, I think that maybe last week we are a little bit hesitant to, uh, as some uh, members say, like homework, because there was also a lot of uh, discussion about like, okay, well, CBC shouldn't micromanage. But of course, like the definition of micromanage is a little bit maybe different. So maybe we can have, for example, specifics and ask for certain at least expectations or at least asking them to, you know, uh, prepare or, you know, kind of read it. So how about liquid index and that too? Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. So I think that for today, um, because we also already went over one hour, um, I think we can maybe close this discussion for now, unless any others want to contribute or share their views. But I just want to say that like, uh, whatever we say, like don't hold it you know, personally. It's just the uh, early phase, and then we're in, you know, many different changes. So it's kind of expected that initially we'll have to adjust and then discuss together. So I appreciate all the feedback, and so don't be like a shy of being harsh. You know, you can even say that, for example, maybe how I or you know Rafael uh, is uh, running the meeting is not so efficient. Maybe it's not so helpful. Then please do let us know because it's more important that we try to get the best practices and improve from the in the early stage so that in the future we can even scale it further and it help more. And then, um, so one of the specific that we'll be also asking is uh, what Rune has asked here, which is that everybody, uh, especially who have thoughts about the limits and boundaries of the role of ADs, council members, and those, and then please write on the forum. I think it will be helpful, not just for our CBC, I think it will be helpful for uh, CBC as well as, um, you know, maker governance as well. So please do so. We'll appreciate it.
Okay, good. Then we have these two take takeaways, right? We have um, criteria or names of experts, and we have uh, AD, A ABC process. Thanks a lot, guys. Thanks for, for pushing through this and um, looking forward to next week. Yeah, thank you so much, everyone. See you next week.